In the previous session, we have discussed about the merge sort algorithm, insertion sort, selection sort. Okay. Now, in this uh, case, now let us discuss about the quick sort algorithm. Okay. So, if we say we are discussing about the quick sort, in the quick sort, initially we are going to discuss about the partitioning procedure. And after using the partitioning, we are going to use this partitioning to do the quick sort. Okay. Now, initially, first of all, let us discuss about what is this partitioning procedure. Assume we are having a following array. We are having this array. Okay. And we have some data elements which are 9, 4, 6, 3. And then assume we have 7, 1, 2, 11 and 5. Assume that this is the data element, this is the array which we have. Okay. Now in this case of array, in the case of partitioning procedure, we use something called as a pivot element. Now we can use this initial element as a pivot element or we can use the last element as a pivot element. And in some books, we have also used any random element as a pivot element. And because we are using any random element as a pivot element, in that case, that quick sort will be called as randomized quick sort. Okay. So initially, we are going to dis discuss the normal procedure of quick sort, and then we'll do some improvement on quick sort to propose a randomized quick sort. Okay. Assume this element is a pivot element. Fine. Now we'll take two pointers, or you can say we'll take two variables. One will be i, and second one will be j. Okay, so assume we are having these index locations. So I'm not numbering them. Just see what I'm doing here. We have a pointer or i, and then we have a variable which is j. Okay. Now what we are going to do is every time we are going to increment j, and if this element is greater than five, then nothing will be done. But if this element is less than 5, then we are going to increment i and then we are going to swap the values pointed by i and j. Okay. So don't worry, let me do it. You will understand what I am saying. Here <coughs> you can see 9 is greater than 5. So nothing will happen. So we will just increment the value of j. Now you see 4 is less than 5. Right? So, whenever this element is less than or equal to the pivot element, then we are going to increment the value of i or we are going to increment i. Okay? So, here 4 is less than 5, therefore we will increment i and then we are going to swap the values pointed by the variable i and the variable j. Okay? So, what will happen? 4 will come here and then 9 will come here. Fine. Again, increment the value of j. So j will come here. Now you see 6 is greater than 5. So we are not going to do anything. We are just going to increment the value of j. So j will come here. Now you can see 3 is less than equal to 5. Therefore increment the value of i and then swap the values pointed by i and j. Hence 3 will come here and then 9 will come here. Again increment the value of j. Here you can see 7 is greater than 5. Fine. So nothing will happen. Increment the value of j. Here you can see 1 is less than 5. Hence increment the value of i and then swap the values pointed by i and j. So 1 will come here and then 6 will come here. Again increment the value of j. Now you can see 2 is less than 5. Because 2 is less than 5, increment the value of i and then swap the values of i and j. Hence, 2 will come here and then 9 will come here. Okay. Again, increment the value of j. Now, because 11 is, less than, is not less than 5, hence we are not going to do anything. Again, increment the value of j. So, when j and pivot both are pointing to the same location, in that case, j the value pointed by j is less than equal to the value of value pointed by pivot. Hence, we are going to increment the value of i. 
and then we are going to swap it. So 5 will come here and then 7 will come here. So after this procedure, let us see what is the data elements which we are getting. The data elements which we are getting are 4, 3, 1, 2, 5, 6, so this is 6, 9, 11 and 7. As you can see, in the previous case, we had the value which is 5. So if you see the position of 5, then you can see all the elements which are in left of 5 are less than or equal to 5 and all the elements which is in the right of 5 they will be greater than or equal to 5. That means 5 is at its correct position. So in all these data items now 5 is at its correct position. So then we are going to return this index location. So this is called as a partitioning. Now let us see one more example for partitioning procedure here. So assume we are having the following elements which is 5, 4, 9, 6, 3 and assume we have uh, one more 5 here. Okay. Now let us choose this element as a pivot element. Okay. And these are the index locations which are P, P plus 1 to up to so on this is the index location q now we have the pointer i and the value j this i will point one location less than j right that means if j is pointing to the location p then i will be pointing to the location p minus 1 fine now you can see this 5 is less than equal to this 5 hence we are going to increment the value of i now we have to swap the values which is which are pointed by i and j fine either you can in your program either you can see that if i and j are bo both are pointing to the same location then do not swap but here just for simplicity i am assuming that i don't have to write this condition there and i am just going to swap it fine so this 5 will be swapped by 5 again increment the value of j now this 4 is less than or equal to 5 hence increment the value of i and then swap their values therefore 4 will be swapped by 4 again increment the value of j now 9 is greater than 5 hence we are not going to swap it again increment the value of j now this 6 is greater than 5 again okay. therefore we are not going to do anything again now this 3 is less than 5 hence increment the value of i and then swap it therefore 5 will come here sorry uh, therefore 3 will come here and 9 will come here okay again increment the value of j so this 5 this j is pointing to 5 and pivot is also pointing to 5 now this 5 is less than equal to this 5 hence increment the value of i and then swap it therefore 5 will come here and 6 will come here so after this complete procedure let us see what is the data elements we have we have 5 4 3 5, 9 and 6. As you can see this 5 is now at its correct position. All the data elements in the left of this 5 are less than or equal to 5 and all the data elements in the right of this 5 are greater than or equal to 5. Now let us write this algorithm. Fine. So we have to take the starting index location. We should know what is the ending index location and then we have to return the position where this in pivot element was swapped from from that position the pivot element was swapped okay so we have partitioning okay and this partition procedure is going to happen on an array a assume this is the array a so it will happen on the array a and then we have the index location p and the index location so we have to take the index location p and the index location q okay so after taking these values we have to take two uh, pointers i and j where i will point one less than this p location and j will point to this p location therefore we have to make assume i is equal to p minus 1 that means one location less than the uh, one location less than this p pth location fine and then we have to take pivot 
so pi boat is equal to q therefore pi boat will point to this last location and every time we have to increment the value of j so j will be incremented from p to q therefore we can write for p to q for p to q now we have j will be pointing to here and the pivot is pointing here then we have to write a logic that if this element is less than this element or less than equal to this element then increment the value of i and then swap their values fine therefore what we are going to do is if a or you can say for i is equal j is equal to p to q this is j is equal to p to q for if a of j is less than equal to this a of pi boat if a of j is less than equal to a of pi boat hence what we are going to do is we are going to increment the value of i so we will do i plus plus and then or you can say simply i is equal to i plus 1 so here i am just writing i plus plus and then we have to swap the values pointed by a of i and a of j okay so this is your for loop fine and after the end we have to return the last value of i because this position will be pointed by i only the last location so we have to return i okay so this is your complete partitioning procedure fine here you can see p and r i have just used the location q so what i'm going to write uh, do is in case of quick sort i'm going to take two variables three variables actually one is p q and r and q will be returned by this and there will be starting index location will be p and ending index location will be r so here i just assume that this is q but in case of uh, I'm, right, I'm just going to write a quick sort here then in that in that case i'm going to assume this is the location p and this is the location r and this value which this partition procedure is going to return will be the value which is stored by q fine so now let us write a quick sort from this fine